Hello and welcome to this HOG4 tutorial which will introduce the output and programmer windows. We will then be assigning values to some fixtures and finally record our first queue. Let's first of all look at the output window. Like the fixture window which we looked at in the last tutorial, the output window is a spreadsheet view and within the HOG4 software all spreadsheets share a common set of values. Working with these spreadsheets is similar in many ways to working with software such as Excel. For example, to resize a column, just click in the column header and drag to the size you would like. We can also reorder the column headers by clicking and dragging them to their new position. Columns can be hidden by right-clicking the header and selecting Hide. They can be revealed again by right-clicking, moving across to Show Position and selecting Show Tilt. By default, aggregation is switched on in spreadsheet views. This means that fixtures are grouped by fixture type. This can be switched off by pressing the configuration button and deselecting the option for aggregation. I find it very useful, so I'm going to re-enable it. Where several different fixture types are used, they are displayed here in the jump toolbar. By clicking on any of these fixture types, the scroll bar jumps to bring that aggregated section into view. When fixtures are referencing to palettes, there is the option to show either the name of the palette or the hard values being outputted by toggling show palettes on or off. There is also a compact view which only displays columns for the actual parameters of each fixture which is very useful for reducing the space taken up in the window for fixtures with very few attributes like the data flash or desk channels. Within the cells of the output window there is the option to display three sets of information. We can show the values of the fixtures we can show any effects that are running, and in sources, we can see where the fixtures are getting their information from, whether it be a particular queue, a scene, or the programmer, for example. Let's now assign some values to our fixtures in order to better demonstrate the programmer window. I will select solar spot 1 through 10 and put them at full. Next, I will select 1 through 5 and using the slotted toolbar, make them blue. I can now invert this selection by using the SELECT soft key followed by INVERT and again using the slotted toolbar I will make these fixtures red. I can now reselect all the fixtures using the ALL key and give them a gobo and a prism. By pressing the BEAM KIND key I can cycle through the wheel sets to find the prism rotate parameter and using the encoder wheel apply a value to this. If I had a particular speed in mind, I could quickly assign this by holding down the set key and pressing the parameter box, typing in the value and pressing enter. I will also quickly assign some values to track spot bolts 11 through 20. I will use the trackball to assign pan and tilt. In HOG4 PC, the trackball is enabled by right clicking the ball. A block of cells can be selected by clicking and dragging over the area you would like. To select a range, click in the first cell, hold down the through key and then click in the last cell. This is very useful for selecting a large number of cells where you would have to scroll down the page. To select a whole column of one fixture type only, click in the black bar of that type. To select an entire column across all fixture types, double click the column header. In the programmer window and other editors, Values can be entered directly into cells and existing values changed. For example, I can give an intensity to the track spots by selecting the column, pressing the set key and entering in a value followed by enter. I can edit the color of the solar spots by dragging over the cells for one through five and pressing the set key, then either double clicking on the new color or touching the color and pressing enter. We're now almost ready to record our first queue, but before we do, Let's just have another quick look at our output window. We can see that some parameters have changed from being grey, which tells us that they are no longer at their default value. If we click the Sources button, we are told that these parameters are getting their values from the programmer. Let's now record our first queue. The default setting for the console is that all values in the programmer will be recorded, whether the fixtures are currently selected or not. Press the Record key and you will see that the soft keys change to various recording options which will be covered in a future tutorial. 
For now, we do not need to select anything here, so we just need to tell the console where to place the queue. To record the queue to playback master 1, just press the choose button for that master. The console has now created the first queue in a new list. Press set to quickly name the queue. We can now clear the programmer. To record another queue on this master, just add some values to the programmer such as solar spot 1 through 10 at 0. Press record followed by the choose key and this has created a second queue within this list. It is also possible to record to a specific location and assign your own queue number. For example, if I put desk channel 101 at full, I can press record 4 slash 10, enter, and this has recorded to master 4, q 10. When I clear the programmer, we can see that the output window is again showing all parameters at their default values, and this is because we haven't played back our queues yet. By pressing play on the masters we have recorded to, we can see the values change in the output window. Values with a blue background are being sourced from the currently chosen master. By choosing master 4 and selecting to view our desk channels in the jump toolbar, we can see that channel 101 is being controlled by this master. In the next tutorial, we will look at the playback of queues, including a basic overview of queue list options. Thank you for watching.